Welcome to the New Muslim Workshop. My name is Mahmoud and today we're going to discuss the famous 5 before 5 hadith for Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Stick around. Welcome to the New Muslim Workshop. Welcome back. So the famous 5 before 5 hadith of Prophet Muhammad is a perfect example of one of the characteristics of Prophet Muhammad that was given to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this characteristic was described by the Prophet والسلام, as Jawami al Kalim. And Jawami al Kalim translates to concise speech or eloquent speech. Now, the beauty of this is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the Prophet, peace be upon him, the ability to convey large amounts of information using very few words. And this is what can be seen in the hadith of. Five before five. The hadith in question is narrated by the cousin of the Prophet, peace be upon him, Abdullah ibn Abbas. And in the hadith, the Prophet, peace be upon him, says, Take advantage of five before five. Your youth before your old age. Your health before your illness. Your riches before your poverty. Your free time before your work or before getting busy, and your life before your death. This was graded Sahih by Al-Albani. At its face, if you look at the, the hadith, it seems like a very simplistic hadith. In actuality, it's not simple at all. It is, as described previously, the prime example of Jawami al-Kalim for the Prophet, peace be upon him, where using very few words, it's almost a, a very short paragraph. He conveys something that touches upon every single one of humanity. And obviously here the Prophet والسلام, is talking to the Muslims, the people who believe in him. However, if you take it as a general concept, this is something that can touch anybody's life in a motivational way. However, for religious reasons, this is obviously not just something that is related to this world and getting the best out of this world. Something that you might get on TikTok or on, um, or on Instagram from one of these uh, inspirational business gurus that are trying to teach you how to keep grinding until you can make as much money as you can and get your Ferrari or Lamborghini and, and that's the end of it. However, because we understand that the Prophet والسلام, was trying to motivate us, trying to push us to take advantage of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given us so that we can overcome our desires, overcome our obsession with uh, being competitive with maybe our neighbors or our friends or uh, the people that we know. The Prophet ﷺ is telling us that you have finite elements in this world, in this life. And if you do not take advantage of these finite elements, they're gonna, much like an hourglass that is turned upside down, run out. And if they run out, that's it. This hourglass will not be turned back again. This hourglass only works one way, and that way is down. So when the Prophet, peace be upon him, says, take advantage of your youth, before your old age, think about this. Why don't you take advantage of your youth and go to Hajj early if you have the ability to do so? Because Hajj is not something for old people. And I learned this the hard way. I actually decided that I wanted to go and perform my Hajj when I was in my early 30s. And it knocked me down. It was uh, brutal. Uh, the, the, the experience that I had, even though this is one of the most wonderful experiences that I had, I became ill. I found that the process itself was very taxing on my body. And after maybe only three weeks of being in Mecca and, and performing my Hajj, I had lost 15 kilos. So take advantage of your youth, of your ability as a young person to do something rather than waiting until you are older to do that thing. In this case, the example of Hajj. You can also use this as a motivation from Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, for you to get married younger. 
so that you are not waiting to be in your 40s or late 30s. If you have the ability, if you have the means to get married earlier, then you should because this is a protection for you and it is a protection for uh, the woman that you marry. Now the second one is taking advantage of your health before your illness. And I saw this firsthand in the last week and a half. And this is, my intention was to fast the, the nine days of Dhul Hijjah. Uh, however, my intention was completely wiped when two days in, I contracted COVID. Now, as a healthy, strong male, fasting nine days wouldn't have been a problem for me at all. However, the moment that I contracted COVID, the fevers and uh, the sneezing and the, the, the just general lack of health meant that something that I took advantage of when I was healthy, I could no longer take advantage of. I could not take advantage of my health and perform these things that to me, when I was healthy, would have been considered mundane. Next is taking advantage of your riches before your poverty. And this has to do with giving. And this has to do with an intrinsic part of human nature, which is the desire for more wealth, where uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said that if the son of Adam had a valley of gold, he would have wanted a second valley of gold, <laughs> because that's just how we are. We are greedy. And uh, unfortunately, this greed that we have uh, also reflects in how we give. And sometimes, even though Allah has blessed us with wealth and with children and with wives and with uh, cars and whatever it is, we still hold back in paying our zakah, we hold back in paying our sadaqah, uh, and we feel like uh, any little thing that we give is way more than what Allah deserves. And how can you count the bounties that Allah has given you? From your eyesight, to your health, to your age, to the, the money that, has, that He has given you in, in uh, having clothing and, and uh, a home, etc. The desires of this world are very much embedded in us, much like thorns in skin or um, a splinter under the skin. And removing it and uh, taking advantage of the money that we have and spending it for the sake of Allah, so that as Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا تُقَدِّمُوا لِأَنفُسِكُمْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ تَجِدُوهُ عِنْدَ اللَّهُ وَخَيْرًا وَأَعْظَمَ أَجْرًا where whatever you present for yourself to Allah, you will find that Allah has made it grow and it is far better with Him than it is with you. Number four is your free time before your work. And here the translation of work isn't really correct because uh, in the Arabic it says shughlak. And shughlak can mean not necessarily work, but you being busy. So. Uh, take advantage of your free time before your lack of free time, before you become busy. And that again is important as somebody who, you know, before you get married, you're not as busy. Or maybe before you, um, in your job, you are placed in a, a position of power, uh, a managerial or a supervisionary uh, position, you are not as busy as you would have been when you are a, a, a regular worker. And as someone who has more free time on their hands, you have more free time to uh, perform the ibadat that, that you can, such as memorizing the Qur'an. Maybe somebody who um, is much wealthier and in a position of power does not even have the ability to memorize the Qur'an because he doesn't even have the time. So time in itself, in this case, is the commodity. And this commodity, it fades away. And the ability for you to take advantage of this time and utilize it in performing more religious rituals, of performing more ibadat, more salah, performing more dhikr, more tahajjud, performing more qira'ah of Qur'an, more memorizing of Qur'an, 
going and doing your Hajj, taking advantage of the, the ability of having time and having free time as opposed to killing time. Because that's something that we as, as humans have uh, unfortunately adopted the idea that we have to kill time by either watching movies or watching shows or uh, playing video games or getting ourselves involved in qil wa qal, you know, uh, celebrity gossip or anything that is not beneficial to you or your family or yourself. And last, the overall umbrella advice, your life before your death because your life is finite your life is like everybody else on this planet slowly trickling away and as we said earlier the hourglass will not reverse itself once this life is gone that's it and Allah says an example of this in Surah Al-Fajr where he says Ya laytani qaddamtu li hayati he says on the tongue of the disbeliever and he says I wish that I had spent more on my life on what is to come and he also that's a, a very distinct designation of hayati that the life the true life is what comes after this world not what we have right now so that's it five before five your youth before your old age, your health, before your illness, taking advantage of your riches, before your poverty, taking advantage of your free time, before your time is taken away from you and you become busy, and taking advantage of your life before your death. I hope uh, this is beneficial. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing and please consider hitting the notification bell. Thanks for watching. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.